Offices have all the fun stuff, whether it's executive toys, company cars, or sexy co-workers. There are some real perks to working in an environment that would otherwise be the very nadir of human employment experience. This particularly sleek model can't play chicken or tonsil tennis, but can it play video games? I can't help it, I have a thing for small PCs. My first tiny Dell Optiplex running an Intel i5 and HD630 graphics was something of a novelty and did remarkably well in some games, all things considered. The HP I later picked up had an i7 of the same generation, which sounded great on paper, but in reality didn't game any better than the i5. Expecting an improvement third time around might be some kind of masochism, but trust me, this time there is a difference. This super small form factor PC has an ace up its sleeve, an AMD Ryzen 3 Pro 3200GE. If you're new to low-spec gaming, AMD have made a name for themselves over the years in what they call APUs, which is AMD marketing terminology for CPUs with faster than average integrated graphics. The Ryzen series of APUs have a handful of Vega graphics cores, the same architecture used in AMD's preceding generation of dedicated graphics cards. While Vega didn't set the gaming world on fire compared to the Pascal and Turing based cards from their Nvidia rivals, the cores integrated into the Ryzen 2000, 3000 and 4000 APUs pummel most other integrated graphics solutions into submission. This is what drew me towards this HP Elite Desk 705G5. Being the same form factor as the 800G3 I covered in my video last year, it amounts to the smallest APU based system I've seen in the flesh, and yet with a Vega 8 GPU on board, it should theoretically have some serious horsepower. I paid £300 on eBay, which is comparable to building a similar system in an ASRock A300, but substantially slimmer. I've seen other retailers selling this and higher spec models for £400 plus, which is somewhat above what I'd personally pay, and probably more than I'd recommend paying unless you really want one. I started running Afterburner on a few games with the Elite Desk straight out the box, however I feel like this wasn't giving me an optimal experience. The single channel RAM setup was resulting in some pretty disappointing frame rates, with Fortnite in particular standing out as borderline unplayable. I felt like stepping up to dual channel RAM would improve things a lot and sure enough adding a second 8GB stick, even a slower 24MHz one, caused frame rates to jump. Using the new performance mode, Fortnite is eminently playable here, with averages well over 60fps, but with a couple of stutters bringing the 1% lows down a bit. In the standard DirectX 12 renderer, frame rates are a little bit harder to tolerate, but 38fps at full 1920x1080 is still a pretty decent achievement for a low TDP chip like the 3200GE. This tiny little PC is ideal for Valorant, a game which has proven to be playable on even some pretty ancient machines. The average frame rate approaches 90 FPS at low settings or 80 at medium. The Battle Royale landscape has changed, and we don't have to put up with games treating us like shit anymore. No PUBG, I don't want to waste ages gearing up before being headshotted from half a mile away, only to go through the whole thing again. I won't stand for it anymore. If on the other hand Stockholm Syndrome still has a hold on you, the free to play light version of PUBG plays extremely well at low settings, giving averages over 60fps. Full 1080p was a bit of a stretch for Rocket League, only managing to scrape over 50 FPS average. I'd be tempted to play at a slightly lower resolution just to push it up over 60. The 
last time I tried playing Warzone on integrated graphics, I spent the necessary half day downloading the game, only for it to refuse to start. In that respect, then 27 FPS at lowest settings with resolution scaling at 66% is actually pretty impressive. After applying a quick fix to the advanced config file, I actually got some playable minimums as well, although the low resolution makes actually playing the game pretty tough. As the original Doom can now be played on calculators and smart fridges, so in 20 years time, people will be able to play Skyrim on literally anything with a display. The original version of the game runs quite happily at over 30 FPS on medium settings here. Squadrons is a tricky one to play with a resolution scaler as your opponents are going to be pretty far away a lot of the time, but only by dropping to 60% of 1080p did we really see a smooth experience. Um, someone's bound to ask. No. No it can't. Not very well anyway. Maybe we could mess around with some config files and drop the resolution, but honestly I can't see it being enough. Perhaps the non-remaster version would fare better, and honestly I think it's a better game. <laughs> so, um, should you actually get one of these for gaming? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. On paper, there's some interesting things about it, but there's too much holding it back. I think the 3200 GE might be being held back somewhat by the rest of the system here. The RAM setup, one stick of 2666 and one stick of 2400, isn't optimal, but the motherboard doesn't support DDR4 above 2666, so there actually isn't a whole lot more performance to be gained there. Thermals were hot, but not dangerously so, sitting in the mid-80s during gaming. I wonder if there might be some power limit throttling going on, preventing us from seeing the full performance from this compact form factor. The BIOS has nothing in the way of overclocking control, and AMD's Ryzen Master software refused to install, so I, I think I've probably wrung as much as I can out of this PC without making some physical upgrades. If you'd like to see me upgrade the CPU in this Elite Desk, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you'd like to show your appreciation, you could always consider donating to my Patreon, link in the description. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.